next on the list what else do we have oh yes the update here courtesy of billboard it says Kanye West's latest Thunder event is the most watched Apple Music live stream ever. And it got me thinking, if you're a diehard Kanye fan, like a stan, which I've never been, I always think stan, standing artist is always a bit bizarre considering the amount of musical artists that exist in the world. To stand one specific person just seems a little bit over the top and unnecessary. And again, as a lover of music, I tend to just, you know, dabble um, in just about every single genre and get into loads of different artists, loads of different albums and moments and scenes and whatever yeah you know i mean it's just no it's just weird to fact to obsess over one person like that but i do understand that something like a Kanye does have that kind of cult stand fan base around him but a lot of them are usually from what i've seen especially if you go on places like you know the ktt um formerly known as the kanye to the forum most of those guys are obsessed with him mostly from a musical standpoint right for his ability to create amazing moments great albums features memorable lyrics memorable bars live shows blah 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 also the fashion and footwear stuff is great it's an add-on but most of those guys are you know infatuated with him because of the music and again music makes sense because you know it provides a soundtrack to people's lives so i was wondering if you're a kanye stan are you a little bit annoyed that all of these records have been broken kanye's allegedly made seven million dollars off the back of that donda live stream event it was visually one of the most incredible things to watch maybe one of the only live streams i watched in recent years where i've kind of stayed up late to kind of catch it myself i've even ended up ripping the flipping live album um from a website and putting that on my phone because the album isn't hasn't dropped yet right and the merch around it all this sort of stuff you know the collaboration of course with demna from balenciaga and formerly of Vetema. um it's great but all in all you care about the music and there's still no album and there isn't really a concrete date out there every date that gets uploaded or updated onto apple keeps changing first is 22nd 25th whatever you know what i mean we don't know when it's going to come out it comes out when it comes out but i would imagine if you're a stan you must be a little bit annoyed at this point to get to come to this moment where all you want is the music but kanye seems to be it i wouldn't say taking a piss but it seems like he would never do this sort of rollout or this sort of kind of release with if it had to concern his shoes or his fashion stuff. It wouldn't do it, would he? Do you get the feeling he wouldn't do it? He wouldn't mess people around at like that. He'd want to kind of, you know, if he says he's going to drop it on this 10th, it'll be the 10th. You know what I mean? Whereas with music, it feels like he takes a piss a lot out of the listeners more so because I guess he feels like he can because he has more, I will say clout, but he has more kind of, room to do whatever the hell he wants because people still regard him as a genius in music whereas in fashion and the design part of things even though he's still operating at a very high level it feels like he's always having to try and prove his worth right is that does that make sense to you i don't know maybe it's just me but it's just it's just interesting to see that all these records are being broken and there's still no album in insight so the article from billboard says the following the second live stream from Mercedes-Benz Stadium pulled in 5.4 million viewers plus a possibly record-breaking 7 million in revenue from in-person merchandise sales. In-person only, which I re you, you have to remember or you have to kind of keep in mind, is pretty insane. Especially when you think of most people when they do tours or they do live shows, they usually tie in the sale of merch um in store or in person and also they also open up their own merch store on their website to facilitate international or other fans who might see them later on in the tour to go buy their merch as well they do it hand in hand usually for the most part of course the priority is to go to the show itself because merch you know usually takes long to arrive and the shipping times are always crazy because they usually take your money up front before they actually put in the order to print the shirts if you didn't know this is why they usually put the four to six weeks flipping turnaround time because they want to make sure they have the money in the bank in order to kind of afford all the printing costs and the shipping and whatnot that is insane to think that they made seven mil on in-person merchandise sales only which again it makes sense because you know there's high margins on all the merch that he's selling and stuff but fuck you know it says the economy was done the listening party in Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta last Thursday, August 5th, set the new live stream record for Apple, pulling in 5.4 million viewers, sources to Billboard. And again, only things like, you know, OVO versus Kanye so far I've been able to kind of garner that reaction from people. Like, I, you know, I stayed up really late to watch the live stream of the show. So I can only imagine what people around other parts of the world are doing. 
It continues says for context, the total is more than double the current live stream record on Twitch and approaches 2020's primetime Emmys, which pulled in an audience of 6.1 million people across the US last September, making it one of the biggest live stream events in the past year. Sources say the Donda Listing streaming party, it could generate 1.1 million tweets at its peak, outpacing Twitter activity for the 2020 MTV VMAs, which is a bit easy to do. VMAs are terrible. West held his first Donda Listing party in July. 23rd da, da, da. so the second event august the fifth year said they pulled in seven million in revenue in in-person merchandise sales sort of says the highest gross in u.s tour since 1999 when billboard box score began tracking touring data is taylor swift's reputation tour in 2018 which grossed under seven million per show Jesus. The number also matches the revenue for the first drop of the Easy Gap versus collaboration with Gap, which former CEO Todd Yahoo generated seven million overnight um when the two hundred blue puffer coat was released in June. So that is insane. That's not even you know what I mean that's not even including his gap collaboration. But again, like I said, as a fan, surely this must fill you with dread because if this guy is making this amount this amount of money from merch without you having to listen to the because that's the thing i was thinking does the merch influence does the music influence the success of the merch even though you don't have it in your phone unless you you know got the fugazi versions or you ripped the live show version the fact that the music generally does sound really good and maybe sounds like the best work that he's done since my beautiful dark twisted fantasy right not including all the same pablos and the yades and shit which were you know fairly mediocre as it goes in terms of kanye's catalog but i wonder if the music wasn't as good whether or not the merch would have done as great as well but i don't think it would have because you think back to the same pablo and the yay merch that all did pretty well everyone was flipping falling over themselves to get those fucking long sleeves Do you remember I remember all you guys that were fighting over those fucking garbage long sleeves um, and tying them around your neck like Kanye. Like people, honestly, his fans, him, Pharrell, there's a few people like that who have stands. Even Travis has got stands like that too. People that dress like them. It's just bizarre. I never understood that. But that aside, um, it must be frustrating if you're a Kanye West fan because it looks like the album's, you know, never coming out. There's rumours supposedly that he's waiting for Drake to drop, which is, you know, from in terms of a musical competition, competitive standpoint, I'm all for because in theory, you would hope that they're both silently pushing each other to create their best work. And all in all, who's going to win? Us, the consumer, the listeners, we're going to win ultimately because two, you know, giant creatives and talents within their fields are going to be doing their best to outmaneuver and outperform and outdeliver each other. And in the, all in all, the fans are going to be able to get two seminal, you know, four provoking, changing works going forward. I guess the other thing I've noticed all about the album, having listened to it, obviously from the rip that I've got, which is a fairly decent rip, I'm going to be honest. It's a really, really well done one. It's been cut and tagged properly. I, I changed the tight, the flipping screen, the cover for the thing though. I made it whatever from the live show. I think they tried to put the actual legit on the cover, but it doesn't make sense. But the most entertaining part about the album is the fact that you can listen to it and it's, there's no, you know, there's no ease alongside any of the tracks. You know, usually it says E for explicit. So every track is, you know, safe for school. Um, you've got some of the most, you know, gutter, you know, gang affiliated rappers in the history or within the scene at the moment, essentially trying their best not to swear, not to curse, um, not to say anything too salacious. And it lends for a really interesting once a once in a blue moon sort of perspective or way of them presenting themselves because you're never going to hear fug you're never going to hear five year foreign and, and all these other people like sounding the way they do sound this album anywhere else because now of course they're bringing their a game because kind of a legend and they're also being asked to um create within these constraints right be also do certain things not say this not say that and it provides for some of the best stuff i've heard in a while when it comes to collaboratively like this sounds incredible this sounds like what a dj Khaled album should sound like that's what i think you know the collaboration is a bit much but this is what it sounds like what it should sound like a good celebration amalgamation of all these interesting artists and scene at the moment you know put on these really amazing different unique beats that bring out the best in each person while still challenging them blah 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 um really really good of course you know standout verse i think 
mostly has to be Fabio Foran because I'm not really a fan of his. Um, I, especially when he was coming up, you know, alongside Pop Smoke during them times, I always thought he was like a poor imitation of him. But over the years, I've grown to kind of like his voice. And I have to be honest, he absolutely murdered this was it called off the grid yeah track number eight with playboy car he obviously he skates all over playboy that's not he, that's not h hard to do when you're actually barring him up but oof, he came strong that track he came absolutely strong one of maybe the standout verses i think on the entire project and considering who else is rapping on it it says a lot about his um pen game but definitely something i wasn't i was definitely wasn't expecting is five year four and absolutely skating on that track called off the grid um it's about what is it 32 it goes on for pretty long to be honest he smashes it really really good verse so definitely check it out if you haven't already 